WA News at 10. The snow has stopped falling across our area for now, but extreme cold could be into the single digits tonight. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kelly O'Neill. KNWA's Katie Davila is in Fayetteville with what you need to know to protect you and your home from the frigid temperatures. Katie. Well, Kelly, I can fully attest that it is freezing out here. It's about 15 degrees right now, and those temperatures are quickly dropping. As Dan was saying, we are under that wind chill advisory, and we're going to get into the single digits tonight. So the biggest issue now is making sure that you're not only keeping yourself warm, but maintaining your vehicles and your homes tonight as well. When temperatures get below freezing, keeping yourself warm isn't the only thing experts say to put on your to-do list. If your tires aren't in good shape, if, if, you're, if you haven't taken care of your car, you're going to end up on the side of the road in a ditch or worse yet, banged up with somebody else's car. And during this kind of cold, don't be surprised if you see your tire light come on. It's hard on the tire, hard on the sidewall when the tires spread out. Um, it can affect fuel mileage. It can cause a lot of heat in the tire. Um, it stresses the rubber in the tire a lot. It can cause a lot of damage. Local mechanics say maintaining your car in the winter is crucial. It's as easy as using an air pressure tire monitor in your driveway. Another easy tire test. Stick a penny in the grooves of your tire. If you can see the top of Lincoln's head, it's time to get them replaced. Cold temperatures can make your car more dangerous to drive, but maintaining your tires can help keep you safe. Tire pressure can fluctuate anywhere from 8 to 12 to 15 degrees just from summer months to winter months. You know, it's a good idea to check them weekly. Running on underinflated tires can substantially increase tire wear and harden tires, which means they won't be able to grip the roads as well. But safe driving isn't the only thing you should be thinking about. Before you head to bed, do an extra check on your home to keep pipes from freezing. Keep your home 66 degrees or higher, open cabinet doors under the sinks, close open air vents, and leave faucets dripping. When those expand, they usually break. When those break, depending on how big the pipe is, it can make a mess in a hurry. As winter weather around the area continues, you can stay up to date with our NWA Weather Authority app that's available in the App Store and online on Google Play. So stay warm out there tonight, guys. We're live in Fayetteville tonight. Katie Davila, KNWA, Northwest Arkansas News. Katie, thank you. Well, several schools in our area have canceled school tomorrow. Elkins, Lincoln, Prairie Grove, Huntsville, and Greenland school districts have all announced that school is canceled on Monday, March 4th. And over 70 churches here in northwest Arkansas reported delayed or canceled services this morning. You can scroll through all of them on our website, nwahomepage.com. Most of these local churches reported they're canceling all service today, services today, but the Johnson Church of Christ says their service resumed at 6 p.m. If you'd like to report a closing and don't already have an ID number, you can call our station and we'll help you get your posting online. You can find that number as well as get alerts for closings on our KNWA News app. It's down downloadable through the App Store or through Google Play. Let's turn to RDOT now and take a live look at their map to see the most up-to-date road conditions. Right now, it looks like we're seeing all green lines, which is good. That means the roads are clear. If the roads aren't clear, you can use the Traveler Information tab on the right to find alternative routes to your destination. To navigate through this map yourself, head over to our website. Again, that's nwahomepage.com. Well, the snow only lasted a couple of hours, but it left some roads frozen over across northwest Arkansas, causing multiple wrecks in both Benton and Washington counties. While only a dusting accumulated on the ground, that was enough to give many drivers a headache on the roadways. Tow trucks were out rescuing some in Fayetteville, while state troopers in Highway Patrol assisted with wrecks on I-49 in Springdale. Uh, Benton County Communications Director Channing Barker says the road department has been preparing for this for two days days now, but that alone isn't enough. They've been pre-treating on the east, the west, and the central parts of the county, and we have been out and about um, since about 7 o'clock on Friday morning. We, as drivers, need to take many precautions every morning when we're going out in this kind of winter weather. It's going to get down into the single digits overnight and into tomorrow morning, so any precipitation that's still on the road could freeze over again and cause some slick spots in the morning. When the temperature drops, it can pose a risk for people and your pets as well. It's important with the cold weather that if you have a pet you keep outside, make sure you provide the correct bedding for your animals. According to Arkansas state law, it's a crime when a person knowingly fails to supply an animal with adequate shelter and food. 
If they do live outside, they need to have a solid enclosure that they can get out of the weather. Don't put blankets in there. Straw is much better because it doesn't stay wet and it keeps them warmer for longer. Another tip is to always have a water bowl available. Sounds pretty simple, but keeping your pets hydrated during the winter helps regulate their body temperature. If you see any animals that need a welfare check, call Animal Control. Around Arkansas, an unforgettable moment in history as thousands marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama for the 54th annual Selma Bridge Jubilee Crossing and Bloody Sunday. The Arkansas Martin Luther King Jr. Commission traveled down for the event, and KNWA's Rochelle Turner shows us how the pivotal moment changed the Civil Rights Act. No justice! No peace! Protesting for change. And voicing their concerns about voting rights. A simple message to some. I'm walking in the same steps that so many different people have walked in. But something much more meaningful to thousands of people. I think it's so powerful. Some people lied on the ground of the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. It means that Martin Luther King's message was heard. Not because it was loud, but because it was clear. Packed with thousands of people from across the U.S. commemorating Bloody Sunday, the 1965 Civil Rights March in which protesters were beaten and tear gassed by police. It's important. It's important because this is ground zero for why we get to vote. The rain didn't even stop them. If, 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 if troops didn't stop them, surely a little bit of water shouldn't stop us. Another step forward in history. 54 years ago, people didn't think this was possible. The Arkansas MLK Commission marching in style. And as another year passes. Now it's possible for black people, white people, orange and purple people to walk together and just be together living in harmony. All right, well, this March, KNWA is celebrating women with special feature stories, and women in Hollywood are having a moment. Female directors, producers, actors, all standing up to the status quo, taking on commanding roles in an industry that's once ruled by men. Viola Davis is no exception. You can see her each week on the hit show, How to Get Away with Murder. And as KNWA's Shannon Hedgie tells us, she might be a big star, but she continues to give back where it all began. From her moving performance in The Help, to her Emmy-winning role in How to Get Away with Murder, to her Oscar-winning performance in Fences, Viola Davis has climbed to the top of the list of Hollywood heavyweights. But before she ever walked the red carpet, she walked the halls of Rhode Island's Central Falls High School. Mimicking his hiccuping. Mimicking his hiccuping. Inside that high school today, her sister, Dr. Dolores Grant, the, the big, big black, black bug, bug. Bled blue blood. Bled blue blood. blood. Teaches the students who hope to follow in Viola's footsteps. My sister Viola has given so much of her time, money, any type of opportunity she's been able to expose the children in the city to, as well as parents, she's gone out of her way, above and beyond. Viola's success and regular contributions to her hometown inspired the city to name this street right next to the high school after her three years ago. It was during a fundraiser for Central Falls High School back in 2012 that Viola told us giving back is her life's purpose. You know, she came in and um, spoke to our senior class. Afterwards, we had an opportunity for the students to connect and meet with her. And every single one of those interactions was genuine. Dolores says Viola is constantly checking in on kids in the high school, especially those in the thespian society Dolores started, quietly paying for field trips to New York City, even giving her input on students' work. I've had students ask me, Mrs. Grant, can you ask your sister what she thinks of my monologue? And we'll tape it. I send it to my sister and she gives her feedback. In a city where the poverty rate currently stands at over 30%, Dolores takes pride in the fact that her sister Viola is giving students hope that they too can make it big. A great story there. To see more stories celebrating women, head over to our website. There you'll find some web exclusive stories about women making a difference in topics to empower females. That's nwahomepage.com. An African-American man now controlling a white nationalist group. Hear how it happened and what his plans are for the future. That's coming up. But first, Dan.
Kelly, the cold continues to move in and wind chills are already below zero, but there's another system that we've got our eye on that moves in tomorrow morning. Say it ain't snow, we'll have that coming up right after the break. Closed captioning is sponsored by Air Control. It's not the final chapter in the book of life, but rather a new beginning, a second act. Join us Monday, where we'll have your top headlines, including how one local college will host a festival focusing on arts and culture. And your morning commute could be an icy one. Rick Katzke is back with a look at traffic and your week-long forecast. See you Monday. There's energy in Fort Smith. It's got a great economic development team uh, and our partnership with them where we market together. It's also about the business partners just like OG&E. We've recruited and secured over $700 million in new capital investment, 6,000 new jobs. Can you feel that? Can you feel the vibe? Can you feel that wave of positive energy? Hello world, wake me up. In Arkansas, we know this little gem of a state is bigger than what meets the eye. Though beauty is natural to our state, it's the people who really make us shine. Crane has always been committed to Arkansas and always will be. We're homegrown and naturally proud because we are Arkansas Trippin'. One thing that I learned growing up as a kid, and my dad always taught me that, he said, son, buy the best. It's going to pay for itself in the long run. The farmer, the rancher, the guy that just needs a lawnmower, we're all the same. We, we're, we're needing a product. We need it quickly. We need it at a fair price. Come in and check out our 3025E Platinum Package, loaded with everything you need to do more. You're going to be satisfied with the John Deere that you buy from PK. Coming up tonight on the Pig Trail Show, we are stepping into the kitchen, have a little fun, testing our cooking skills with Razorback Kate and Chadwick. And I promise it tastes amazing. Tonight at 10.30 on the Pig Trail. Now, your weather authority forecast with Chief Meteorologist Dan Scott. Here's a great example of how fast this snow moved in. Right at sunrise, which obviously wasn't a sunrise, heavy snow coming down, but as fast as it moved in, boy, did it move out quick as well. And the temperatures continue to drop. That's a big weather story. We'll highlight that. We'll highlight what happened with this system, why it moved in and moved out so fast. And we've got temperatures that are currently in the lower teens, just like the low temperatures as it has fallen below freezing in the River Valley as well. So this morning... There was a few things that didn't pan out quite as expected. There was no freezing rain or wintry mix. We knew that would be a quick changeover, but it started as snow uh, and accumulated pretty quickly. In fact, the roads got a little bit slick. But as we moved throughout the late morning hours, this dry air in the mid-levels came through, cut off the precipitation, and then that was the end of it. So just a little trace here and there, uh, about a half inch, I think, at the most. And I appreciate everybody sending in all their photos. They were neat to see, and uh, a lot of people enjoying this snow day, which really wasn't a whole lot of snow. But there's a system that tracked north of us and heavier snow across Missouri. They were more in the path of this storm as it moved to the east. And on the water vapor, boy, you can really see this low. There it is, a giant low, but it was tracking north of us. There's the dry air, that orange-colored air that moved in. That's what cut off the precipitation so fast. So as that low track north of us, that meant a less favorable chance for heavy snow potential. But there is a system that's to our northwest. This is what's currently happening. Now, granted, there's high pressure, which is sinking air in place over the area. So this might continue to weaken and fizzle out as it moves in. However, it still is on there, and I think even some flurries might be popping up. So this is what's on there right now, and this is what the model thinks it should look like. There's something missing there. <laughs> All the snow that has happened. So as this translates southeastward, it's already underdone on the amount of precipitation. And therefore, I think some flurries, maybe even some light snow in southeastern Oklahoma, which looks like a more favorable track, looks pretty likely. So had to adjust the forecast a little bit. And we've got a little 20 and 30 percent in there for the early morning hours, just for the potential for some light snow. Our current temperatures are in the lower teens. It is cold. We are close to single digits already.
12 in Rogers, 15 in Fayetteville, uh, below freezing, well below freezing in the River Valley with no winter weather that occurred at all there. Temperatures are just too warm, 14 in Tulsa, and we've got that biting northerly wind. Now, the wind chills with those northerly winds around 10 to 15 miles an hour, one below zero in Bentonville, 12 in Fort Smith. There's the wind chill advisory. It goes uh, from midnight tonight, which it should be already in effect because it's pretty cold, but it gets even colder after midnight, and it lasts until about 9 o'clock in the morning. And another weather story that you'll hear about tomorrow, a deadly tornado day, unfortunately. Very, very devastating. Uh, teens of fatalities that's happened. So it's not just in the single digits. Very, very dangerous. Dangerous and scary scene in Georgia and Alabama. Future track overnight tonight shows that little light snow that drifts in, potentially happening. Temperatures falling to single digits and hitting the mid 20s uh, during the afternoon. And when we look at the wind chills, you're going to see that we are going to get cold below zero. And then finally, the last thing that we're going to show you is this light snow that could move in. The future track is showing perhaps a little bit of a dusting tomorrow morning when you wake up and go, wait, I thought that snow was over. Well, that's that's the system that's coming in, Kelly. So we've got uh, Tuesday some sunshine. Look at the warming trend as we move in. In fact, I put a mild on Thursday as we're in the 50s. Some good news. Then we'll get into the mid 60s on Saturday. And I'm not going to say this just quite yet, but we'll watch Saturday because the potential is there for stronger storms. It's kind of like that roller coaster, just. 65, though, I can. I can do that. Yeah, we can. Hopefully it doesn't come with strong storms, so we'll watch it. All right. Thanks, Dan. Well, coming up in sports, find out what's ahead on our 30-minute pig Shell show. That includes the talk whether to put Nolan Richardson's name on the court at Bud Walton Arena. Your pig Shell Nation report coming up next. England Dental. Quality dentistry with compassion and care. Call us today. Pediatrician and active mom, Virginia McCord, knew glasses and contacts were not an option for her lifestyle. That's why she chose LASIK from McDonald Eye Associates. After LASIK, I can really just focus on my family, my patients, my activities, and don't really have to worry about my vision anymore. I trust all my physician colleagues and their opinion. They put their trust in Dr. Betts, and I did too, and I'm really glad I did. If you're tired of glasses and contacts, you can schedule your free evaluation with McDonald Eye Associates today. Ways to lose stubborn belly fat. Metal vibration therapy. Not cool. Freezing away fat cells with cool sculpting. Now that's cool. Cool sculpting safely freezes and removes fat cells with little or no downtime and no surgery. Results in patient experience may vary. Some common side effects include temporary numbness, discomfort, and swelling. Ask your doctor if cool sculpting is right for you. Visit Earl MD to learn more and book your complimentary consultation. At Northwest Health, we're making it easier to see a healthcare provider. Book an appointment online with one of our primary care physicians, or walk right into any Northwest Health urgent care without an appointment. Online check in for ER and urgent care visits saves your spot in line before you arrive. With options around the region and around the clock, the care you need has never been easier to find. At Northwest Health, we're taking your care in new directions. Visit mynorthwestanycare.com. I'm a club volleyball player and I'm pretty good at it. I really like to run and get those tips up and stuff, but when my feet hurt, it just really is bad and I can't get there because my feet are just this bad pain. I'm like, ow. So I told my mom, she took me into good feet and I noticed that I've never really had the pain since then. So I really want to be on the women's national team <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that good feet is going to help me get there. My name's Taylor and that's my good feet story. See for yourself with a free personalized arch support fitting at the good feet store. Now, from Fayetteville, high on the hill, this is your Pick Trail Nation report, sponsored by Crane Automotive Team. Hey, what's up? Razorbacks had to go down to the wire to snap a six-game losing streak, but they get it done. 74-73 at home against Ole Miss. Arkansas beats the team and lost to 84-67 in Oxford back in January. The Hogs get 22 from Mason Jones, who finished 7 of 10 from the floor, hitting six threes. Jalen Harris with the game winner. Kevin McPherson will join us to look back at Saturday's game, and he will bring us the latest in recruiting. We're celebrating the 1994 Razorbacks as well. Coached by Nolan Richardson. Should the Hogs name the court at Bud Walton Arena after Nolan? We'll discuss with our senior analyst.
analyst Mike Irwin. Women's hoops closing the regular season at College Station, plus Arkansas baseball staying at home this week after putting the finishing touches on a sweep over Stony Brook. Here from Dave Van Horn, and we'll tell you who the Hogs face next at Mom Walker Stadium. Arkansas native 2020 running back John Oliver in studio with our recruiting insider Otis Kirk. Off the track, Alyssa Orange catching up with Peyton Chadwick and the latest from former Ridgebacks at the NFL Combine. It's all coming up. All right, thanks, Drew. Looking forward to it. Well, a black man now in charge of a white nationalist group. Hear his intentions. That's coming up next on KNWA News at 10. And with great deals on all these Toyotas, you can make plans to go anywhere. Anywhere. Hello? During the Ready, Set, Go sales event, get $1,000 customer cash or qualified buyers get 1.9% APR financing for 60 months on a new 2019 Tacoma. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Coming up tonight on the Pig Trail Show, we are stepping into the kitchen, have a little fun, testing our cooking skills with Razorback Peyton Chadwick. And I promise it tastes amazing. Tonight at 10.30 on the Pig Trail. Dr. Earl is one of the elite 4% of U.S. physicians certified in three-dimensional high-definition liposculpture. Dr. Earl offers the most comprehensive body contouring practice in Northwest Arkansas, minimally invasive and minimal downtime. Vaser Lipo gives a three-dimensional high-definition result. Dr. Earl's unique cool sculpting protocols use two cool sculpting machines to give superior results. Come see why Dr. Earl has won best body contouring in Northwest Arkansas two years in a row. You're watching KNWA News at 10. A black man has taken control of a white nationalist group, leaving even the Southern Poverty Law Center perplexed. As Meredith Wood reports, his motivation is far from that of the group's former leaders and its members. One of the nation's largest white supremacist groups has a new and unlikely leader. I'm black? Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Reverend James Hart Stern, a black civil rights activist and the new president of the National Socialist Movement. His intention, to shut it down. I said, give it to me. I said, by you giving it to me, I'm going to do it like a book or a movie. Shelf it. I said, at least you know if I have it, no one's going to ever use it again. In 2017, a rally organized by the NSM and other white nationalist groups turned deadly in Charlottesville, Virginia. A federal lawsuit filed by people injured in the rally claims the groups and their leaders conspired to commit violence, intimidate, and harass residents of the city. NSM's leader at the time, Jeff Shope, denied the allegations. But Stern said Shope was concerned about being held responsible for the group's alleged actions. And that after several conversations, Shope agreed in February to sign the organization over to him. I asked the court yesterday to file liable charges against the whole lawsuit. In other words, the National Social Movement is, is, is claiming guilt to everything that ever happened. But in a letter to members on March 1st, Shope maintained the NSM's innocence and accused Stern of deceiving him when he appointed him as the group's new leader. All right, stay with us. Chief Meteorologist Dan Scoff has a final check of your forecast after the break. Stick with us.